What's up guys, in today's tutorial we are back with the Tycoon series. Now, I realize that there are quite a few bugs, especially you guys have pointed out to me and a few mistakes that I made which I need to apologize for, so I'm sorry about that. However, we are going to be fixing those today. The first mistake I made is that other players can claim your Tycoon, or you can claim other players' Tycoons. So what we want to go ahead and do is open up our Tycoon right here, go into the scripts, and then go into our core script. Inside of our core script, we can just scroll all the way down past here, and we just want to go right into our own owner door function. Now, right underneath this, if player find first child has tycoon.value equals equals to false, then we just want to write player colon find first child has tycoon.value, and this is going to be equal to true. All this is going to do is going to make sure that the player automatically has that value inside of them that will set this to true. And then this is going to make it so that they can't claim another tycoon. That should fix you the issue of being able to claim multiple tycoons. So another problem that was brought up to me is that there are problems with the conveyor belt. Such as every time you rotate your tycoon, you have to rotate your conveyor belt manually inside of the script. And that can just get annoying after a while. Also the fact that it's simply deprecated now. So let's hold alt on your keyboard. I forgot what it is on a Mac. I'm sorry. It's probably command, I believe. And we just want to click on whatever it is that we're clicking on, which is in this case is our conveyor belt open that up with this little arrow and open up our conveyor script velocity if you didn't know it's already been deprecated in this sense so we want to say script dot parent dot assembly linear velocity and this is going to be equal to script dot parent dot c frame dot look vector times let's to go with 15 so what this is going to do is that it's going to use the assembly linear velocity instead of just velocity and this is the linear velocity of the parts assembly and what it's going to do is it's going to set the velocity of this part basically equal to the direction that it's facing times 15. so instead of just going in a separate direction that we have to change manually every single time this is going to go in the direction that the conveyor belt is facing and this will make it that we don't need to actually change it every time that we rotate our tycoon or anything like that. Now after that we just want to go up here to the very top of our script. I'm just going to add a repeat function right here. We're going to say repeat task dot wait one second until script dot parent dot parent dot parent dot parent dot parent dot parent is equals equals to game dot workspace. So if we follow along with all these parents right here, you can see that it goes script dot parent will get to the conveyor belt. That'll be right up to here. And then dot parent will get us to main item, which will be up to the third one. And then when we add this parent right here, that will get us up to the tycoon. And then this parent right here is going to be the tycoons folder. And then this parent right here is going to be workspace. And I accidentally put one too many parents inside of here. We only want five parents. So this will be once again script.parent.parent.parent.parent equals to game.workspace right here. So it's basically just going to wait until our conveyor belt is in the proper location. We do this because whenever we're going to duplicate our tycoon and move it into server storage, we just want to make sure that we wait until until that this conveyor belt is actually in the correct spot before we go changing its velocity or anything like that. Now, of course, if you go to your conveyor belt, you will want to go ahead and add in a decal to your conveyor belt. And wherever the orange face is, in this case, it's on this side, as you can see right there, that is going to be the front of your conveyor belt. And so at the moment with look vector, it's going to be going in that direction which means that I need to delete this decal first of all. I'm just going to move the cache part out of the conveyor belt first hand, and then I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees this way, and then we can scale it across and accordingly just like this. After that, we just shrink it down a little bit, and just like that, we are good to go. So that's all we need to do for the conveyor belt. Now for common errors such as this one, this is simply just a warning that Roblox is giving you because of the way Wait for Child works. What may help a little bit is that if we go back into our core script right here and scroll down a little bit further let me just close off a few of these functions real quick is that inside of our buttons function right here we just want to put a comma after v.dependency.value and then put a very large number 
something like a hundred thousand or even a million. So this is going to be the timeout at which wait for child is going to stop. Right here you can see if the child does not exist, it will yield the current thread until it does. And that is perfect what we want to do. Let's go ahead and close the core script off now. And that should be most of the functions and bugs that we have inside of our tycoon fixed. If you would like to, you can find the uncopy locked place of this tycoon inside of the description of this video. You can also join the discord server down below and inside of the assets channel, you can find your very own downloadable copy of this tycoon place if you would like to mess with it inside of there. Anyways, that's about it for this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial just as much as I did, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.